My name is Gray Jones. I'm the host of the TV Writer Podcast, partner of Script Magazine, and also these video tips. Well, today is part two of a series looking at RAID technology and how to protect your data. And as I mentioned in the previous episode, which I would urge you that you watch, RAID is something that spreads information across a number of drives in order to enhance speed while also being able to protect your data, depending on the RAID level. And it's a way of doing so that is relatively inexpensive. And by inexpensive, of course, there's some cost involved, but it, compared to the enterprise-level solutions, you can do so for as little as even a few hundred dollars. So today I'm going to look at primarily the Rocket Raid 4522. This is the newest offering from High Point Technologies and I'm really excited about this. I've been testing it out thoroughly and I think you're going to get excited about it too. I should mention if you really are on a limited budget, you can look at um, port multiplier technology. As I mentioned in the previous episode, it's not as fast, but it does offer data protection and is very if very efficient for what it does. And uh, there are ways you can get involved as little as $160 for the enclosure. If you look at Newegg, you can find Sens Digital TR4M enclosures, and you can actually get them bundled with a Rocket Raid card that offers you two ports. And so by getting two of these enclosures, you could add up to eight drives and um, and have an eight drive protected array which is great or you can buy the enclosures for i think 99 dollars the last time i checked and then get a rocket raid 2314 card which gives you four port multiplier ports and so because these cards and enclosures have been out for a while um, there's lots of information on the web about how you might do that but i would recommend these i've used tons of these cards and enclosures before and so at the lower end um, you can set up a RAID with with those for literally, like I said, just a few hundred dollars. But today we are going to talk about the Rocket RAID 4522 because it is a card that, that offers a high level of performance and you can scale upwards in terms of your storage needs. It deals with SAS technology. And SAS has been out for a while. It lets you inst lets you install up to 128 daisy chained devices. And keep in mind, each of these devices may have as many as 24 bays inside. I've got a Habi 24 bay enclosure. I could literally have 128 of those. Wow. I mean, more than any person or most companies would need. But it's good to know that you can just add other enclosures as your needs increase. Now, I used the predecessor of the 4522, the 4322, for years. I recommended it to a lot of my clients. And the reason is it's got a 1.2 gigahertz hardware controller, uh, an Intel controller. And that's one of the fastest out there. Most of them have only 800 megahertz. And so get, having that Intel 1.2 gigahertz controller makes a, a big difference, as well as got an Ethernet port for monitoring your RAID on any computer on your network. The performance, awesome. But it's a few years old. The 4322 is only compatible with three gigabit SATA drives. And uh, and so, you know, with the new six gigabit drives coming out, there's a need to look to the future. So the future has come, and that is the Rocket Raid 4522. Now, I'll admit, I was a little bit skeptical about losing the Intel 1.2 gigahertz chip. I was a little skeptical, skeptical about moving to HBA switching. And I was also skeptical about losing the Ethernet Port. So could the 4522 measure up? Well, first of all, let's get the Ethernet port out of the way. I had to ask myself, how often do I really go to another computer on the network to check on the RAID? Okay, I can understand them taking it out and, and saving a bit of money on the card. And since the 4522 can be set up to email you um, wherever you are with, with any problems that are happening in the RAID, it's not really a big issue. So comes down to performance. How does the 4522 perform? I put it through a barrage of tests with real-world drive volumes. In other words, not empty. Um, a number of different shapes and sizes, some of them with 3 gig gigabit drives, some of them with 6 gigabit. I put them in a NetStore PCI expansion, expansion enclosure, in a Magma Express Box 3T Thunderbolt enclosure, and as well inside my 2010 12-core 2.66 Mac Pro. I used Hitachi 7K2000, 7K3000, 
and Seagate 7200.14 drives, and they ranged from four to eight drives per volume. Even if you have a larger enclosure, I would generally not recommend setting up uh, volumes higher than eight drives. There's, there's just real world reasons why you wouldn't want to do that, um, even though you can get better performance, but in terms of initializing time and uh, that kind of thing, it's better to split up into eight per volume or, or less. Um, you can, I should mention, you can direct connect up to eight drives. And by direct connect, I mean that you can get a non-expander enclosure. In other words, an ex uh, a sample enclosure might be the Sans Digital TR4X for about $250. lets you connect four drives with an SAS cable uh, included. And, um, and it's basically not expanding. In other words, you can't add a whole pile of enclosures. You can have one of these enclosures connected to each of the, the SAS ports on the 4522, and that's it. If you um, only think you're going to need eight drives, put three terabyte drives inside. That's 24 ta terabytes worth of information, or 21 once it's, once it's formatted. If that's all you're ever going to need, all power to you. For me, I recommend SAS expansion enclosures. They're a little bit more money but they give you the ability to scale. So say, for instance, you think 21 terabytes is, is a lot now, but we thought that, that 20 megabytes was a lot a few years ago. So you know what I mean. Our, our, our data needs are increasing all the time. So SAX, SAS expansion is the way to go. Um, you can just search for SAS expansion enclosures on the internet. There's a huge range of price. Some are $3,000 and upward. I've used a lot of the lower cost ones. For instance, Habi makes a number of low cost options. Uh, and I would recommend, I, I actually, this test I did on a Habi DS24E 24 bay enclosure. Um, there are other ones available that, uh, that are relatively inexpensive. I do highly recommend them. Uh, all of these volumes were formatted RAID 5. You can look at part, part one uh, for my explanations of why I choose RAID 5. Uh, there's other RAID levels that are available, but RAID 5, it's it's the most popular, and there's a good reason. And I should mention you can download a full PDF with all of the specs and results. I'm not going to explain er everything on camera. I, mean, I don't want to bore you to death, but if you want those little details, they're in the PDF that's in the comment section below, and there's also links to more information and where you, you can buy these solutions. So on to the results. Like I said, real world volumes. I had one with uh, four Hitachi drives of of uh, three gigabit variety, the 7K2000. I had another one with six of the 7K2000 three gigabit drives. I had one with four six gigabit drives and one with eight six gigabit drives. And they ranged from 33% full to 85% full because how many of us have empty volumes sitting around? One wanted real world results. I tested them with the Black Magic Speed Tester, which is available if you have a Black Magic card. And also with Xbench, I don't like Xbench as much because I find the results really vary quite a bit. But because so many people are using it, I, I did include those results. And so, how did it perform? First of all, I want to say I was I was very, very pleased that it performed incredibly well in the expansion enclosures. I was surprised by how well it performed in the expansion enclosures. As a matter of fact, particularly with the, with the NetStore enclosure, there was virtually no difference between having it internally in the uh, in the Mac Pro and in the NetStore. And I had other other cards going at the same time. So, um, very, very encouraging about that. They, there was a little bit of a performance hit inside the Thunderbolt enclosure, but not uh, so much so that, that it would affect your purchasing decision. For instance, uh, say, for instance, with the, with the six gigabit drives, the eight volume, or for the eight drive volume, it, you, I was getting read speeds in the net store of 757 megs per second, and in the, in the Magma Thunderbolt enclosure, 676. So 676 megs per second is pretty fast. I mean, you got to be doing some uncompressed HD video with a number of layers before that is not fast enough. So there there were, um, and I did compare it with a 4322, and across the board, either as fast or a lot faster than the 4322. 
Uh, really pleased about that. Didn't miss the 1.2 gigahertz Intel chip. As a matter of fact, in, in some of the tests, the 4522 was almost twice as fast as the 4322. So no loss at all going to HBA. Um, and the, there was definitely an improvement with the 6 gigabit drives, especially when you get a lot of them together. Um, there's just more bandwidth to be able to pass this data back, back and forth. With four drives um, in the 6 gigabit, which is probably what you're going to be purchasing now, it ranged from read and write speeds of 425-ish uh, megs per second uh, across all of, all of the NetStore, Magma, Internal, Everything was around that level between 407, 437 megs per second, which is quite respectable for almost everything you need to do. When it got up to eight drives, wow, that's where, where, where we we're seeing 750 megs per second going up to 817, um, 810, uh, scanning these results. Uh, like I said, in the, in the Thunderbolt enclosure, the, the read and write speeds were 676, 566, but still quite respectable. And up to four drives, the, um, the, the Thunderbolt saw no difference. So it seems like there's, there's just a little bit of a bottleneck once it gets to slightly higher speeds in the Thunderbolt. And uh, this is a brand, brand new enclosure, so they may um, deal with that with firmware. They may improve that with firmware uh, updates in the future, but still high enough performance for most of the things that you want to do. Uh, with Xbench, I saw results going up to 996 megs per second. But again, I don't trust um, Xbench as much, but you can look at the figures in the PDF. Keep in mind, I'm giving you figures with an 85% full volume. And if you know anything about hard drives, they get a lot slower as they get full. This eight drive volume was 85% Full and still giving 995 megs per second. Pausing for a second. That's pretty impressive. Even with a Blackmagic speed tester, that, that 757 megs per second, that's 85% full. So you understand why I'm so excited about this technology. The Rocket Raid 4522 has web software to set it up. There's kind of three steps. The, the when you first install a fresh drive inside, it has to be initialized with the the high point drivers. Then that makes them available for however you want to create your array, uh, your RAID five array, and you do that within the the web GUI. And then once you've initialized that volume, then it's made available to your um, your operating system, where you would use your operating system's tools to format that volume. Um, so I would encourage you. Um, once you figure out which option that you have, consult the documentation to to figure out how you want to set it up. As I said in the previous episode, always buy spares. Buy them at the same time. You want matched drives. It's amazing how quickly the the models change, and and the new models will not match your drives. So say you're getting 7K 3000 drives or 7200.14 drives. Try try to think ahead to what you're going to need and buy them all at the same time, at least for uh, for this particular volume. One of the things you may want to do is buy a larger enclosure, and you don't necessarily have to fill it up. So you got a 24-bay enclosure, and you only fill up four of the bays or eight of the bays. And that gives you room to expand even within that enclosure. So obviously, this is a lot of information, and if you have any questions, fill them out in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer your questions. Or if, if you want, I do consulting as well. If you have a bigger project, I'm happy to consult for a fee. You can just contact me through um, the comments and, and we can set that up. Again, look at the, at the info field below for how to get more information and how to purchase these. You can follow me on Twitter, at Gray Jones is my handle. I would encourage you to subscribe to this YouTube channel for lots more video tips to come. And as well, you can find out more about me at imdb.me slash Gray Jones. Thanks for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this. Bye-bye.